Welcome to our deep dive into the latest NVIDIA flagship uh, GPU, the 5090. It has a really, really amazing spec. So this is a glimpse of it. It uh, features uh, an incredible 21,760 CUDA cores and uh, 32 gigabytes of VRAM. The 5090 also features the Blackwell architecture. This makes it very unique because it is supporting the FP4 floating point natively. This is lacking for all the previous generation of card. In this video, I would like to do a demo on running FP4 formatted flux dev on the 5090 and the we can compare it to the FP8 format to see how fast it is. I think this is very exciting. The flux.dev is really a cutting edge text to image model. However, it needs a lot of resource, so it kind of slow. With the FP4 support enabled, many people is interested in how fast it can be. Before we dive in, here is a quick look at the PC spec and the operating system. It features a 5090 GPU and the operating system is the Linux. For the software, I use the Tensor Art. It already provided a demo for the Flux. However, it only has the command line. I wrote a quick user interface for that. I will use that for the demo. So here it is the UI. It's a very should be very familiar. There is a prompt input field. You can input your prompt. There is the option that you can choose set your denoising steps. Usually for the flux, twenty steps can be enough. And simply click the generate image and go back to the. Terminal, it can show us what's going on, which divide it into each steps. And we can see that the transformer part it took about 2.9 seconds. Yeah, and we also can see the output image. It looks quite nice. Do it one more time. We can also pay attention to the bottom part, which is the monitoring for the GPU. We see the power usage, we see the memory, the VRAM, the GPU utilization. Output looks stunning. On the terminal, it shows us the exactly what's going on for each step. We see that the total pipeline took about uh, three seconds. One disadvantage of it is that it still uses lots of VRAM close to 29 gigabytes. Fortunately, there is another optimization that can help re reduce the VRAM. So there is a flag called uh, low VRAM. Let's uh, try that. Now let's use the same prompt and the same setting, 20 step diffusion steps, click generate image. Notice what's going on on the monitoring. We see that now it uses around nine gigabytes of the VRAM. Wow, that's a big reduction. Let's go to the terminal and uh, we can see that the total processing time for the pipeline is uh, 7.2 seconds. I think that's uh, due to the low VRAM mode. Try it another time. Yes, it's uh, pretty consistent in terms of the usage of VRAM and the total time for the pipeline. I think interestingly, for the transformer step, the time is about the same. This time is about 6.8 seconds. Result 
looks uh, stunning. Now let's see how the FP4 compare with FP8 for running Flux. Here's a quick uh, running FP8 Flux on Comfy UI. We see that uh, the progressing bar on the bottom just shows uh, 20 steps, took uh, about uh, 8 seconds. Total time is about uh, 9 seconds. Let's uh, compare it with the FP4 low VRAM mode and the high VRAM mode we showed uh, earlier. So this uh, graph presents you the FP4 versus FP8 because we ran FP4 using both the high VRAM and low VRAM mode. We see that for the high VRAM FP4, it took about uh, 3 seconds to generate uh, one image using 20 step diffusion steps. For the low VRAM FP4, it's uh, almost uh, double, which is uh, 6.8 second for one image. We showed uh, the FP8 one using the Comfy UI, it took about 9.27 seconds to generate one image. So you see the comparison is uh, very, very significant, right? We see that FP4 can be used to significantly reduce the time needed to generate one image. I think uh, that's uh, really the beauty of the FP4. That's uh, really encouraging. I think uh, it's, it's even more encouraging is uh, if you look at the low VRAM mode, it uses about uh, 10 gigabytes of VRAM. However, it uh, significantly reduces the time needed to generate one image. Wow, what a great uh, advancement. We see that it's uh, significantly quicker. How about uh, the quality? We know that uh, commonly the quantization usually lead to degraded uh, quality. However, the Flux team and the NVIDIA team did a great job. They did uh, some optimization for the quantization. So the FP4 formatted the model can generate images with uh, almost the same quality as the FP8 or even FP16. I think uh, here is to show some simple comparisons between the FP8 and the FP4. In general, I feel that uh, we normally were not able to notice the difference at all. Here is a report adapted from NVIDIA team. So they compared the quality using the FP4 versus the BF16 format for the Flux 1.dev. And I think you can see that the FP4 can sometimes even be better than the BF16. This shows the great potential for the FP4 format. It's not only reduce the VRAM, but also can have like a higher quality. I hope uh, this video is useful to you. Please subscribe to my channel. I will upload uh, more videos about uh, 1590.